Good morning. I think the time has come, and I'm so accustomed to saying good afternoon at 5 after 12 that uh, I have to make a special effort to say good morning. Uh, so happy to see you here, and glad that the message was uh, gotten around. I'm beginning with one of my very most favorite pieces. The Prelude and Fugue in B minor is for the ears, what I think, a drive through glorious mountain scenes on a sunny autumn day is for the eyes. Uh, I just find this a wonderful piece, and uh, when you hear the very first motive, uh, you'll see what I mean by cascades. Uh, it's kind of like waterfalls. Uh, that's not all that happens. There are octaves that go with upward thrusts, and. Uh, just all kinds of things are, are happening in this piece. And I mentioned that the fugue begins with a subject that is really so simple, it's almost as if Bach just took an upward scale and down. And then just decorated the first note. And the third note. And the fifth. that subject pervading the entire fugue. I say sort of like a river runs through it. The first third of the fugue has a delightful counter subject to that subject that goes And this uh, next third of it has another counter subject that goes. And the final third has this counter subject that goes like this. But in the last third of it, the first counter subject and the third counter subject very often, almost always, happens simultaneously. And so it's all a wonderful fabric woven together uh, that I think is just a delightful piece. I hope you enjoy the B minor prelude and fugue of Bach.
the month of October, we often turn our thoughts to Reformation and the meaning and value of the church in many forms. And so a lot of the pieces I've chosen today are pieces that, based on, that are based on uh, what the church means to us. So we're going to go next to the hymn built on a rock, the church does stand. And I would encourage you uh, to look at the hymn book. Um, I think I put the number in the notes. I hope I did. If not, um, it's in the, okay. Um, the first stanza gives uh, David Dahl what he uses to make each of the uh, uh, settings uh, for the canon, the carillon, the duo, the aria, and the fugue. And so each of those has uh, the, the part of that stanza listed as the title. Uh, so if you are familiar with the first stanza, uh, you will hear all these things. Uh, the part, even when steeples are falling, I don't think, is part of what his intent is, and I hope it's not part of how my plane comes up. But in any case, um, uh, the first, uh, the canon is pretty much just the, the, the hymn tune, um, and uh, then uh, it's, it's to be very solid, so that's the building on the rock. Uh, and then we will have uh, the handbells join us for, uh, uh, built on a rock, the church to stand, even when steeple, uh, bells still are chiming and calling, uh, comes the end of the next line, and so the bells will help us chime and call. Uh, then, uh, calling the souls of those distressed is a fun movement. Uh, it's a little duo with very jerky, distressed rhythms. Uh, then finally, uh, calling the young and old to rest uh, is a very gentle, quiet movement, as you can guess and the final fugue, longing for life everlasting. So uh, there's, there's a lot of picturesque material in this piece. And I apologize for the pause between the prelude and fugue. There's one stop that has a little short in it, and it turns itself off unless I put a pencil behind it and I'd forgotten to put the pencil behind, so I'd stop to do that. It's there now. <laughs>
with a setting that is probably an unfamiliar tune. So I'll play the chorale first, then the setting of Gerhard Krapf, uh, which also has uh, a, num a number of pedal cadenzas between iterations of the melody. And then finally, Bach's tune, which, or not tune, but uh, fugue setting, uh, is based on just the first four notes of the uh, melody of uh, We All Believe in One True God.
we turn to another one of the great hymns, uh, Christ is Made the Sure Foundation. Uh, and this is a setting by Austin Lovelace. Uh, and uh, it starts with the Pasakaya, which is a piece based on a, a, a bass motive. In the bass voice of the piece, there's a repeated motive, in this case, the first line of the hymn. You'll hear that over and over with other harmonies happening above it. And then there's a little fugetta and finally the finale.
Well, and I don't think I could let November go by without, or set October go by without uh, some setting of a mighty fortress. So here's Jan Zwart.
you very much, and I hope you can come back in November when we'll do things of being thankful.